Bouju, Gidiga Bouju, Nindijinika, Zajijak, and Dudam, Wikwe Dong, and Du Japan, Jibwe Nishinabe, Nini and Dao. So, my name is Jerry Jandro. I am a tribal member from the Kiwana Bay Indian community, and um, I was asked to come out and help with a, a birch bark um, harvesting workshop. Uh, we have a guest, uh, Mina, who's here from Finland, uh, another culture that has um, some deep roots with the uh, birch trees, um, showing uh, some of their methods of harvesting to make uh, musical instruments and other uh, utilitarian uses. And I'm out here to uh, also share a perspective from some of the, the teachings that I've had about uh, the proper harvesting techniques uh, to ensure that the, the trees remain healthy after you harvest the bark. And, and for the people that don't know uh, about harvesting the, the bark, I think I've heard a lot of comments of, about, uh, uh, you know, we're killing the trees when we do this. And, and that's why it's very important to know what you're doing because you can kill the trees, but if you do it at the right time and using the right methods, the tree is absolutely fine. And so we've, uh, we've coexisted, you know, as, a, as Ojibwe people and with the Wigwasatig for a very, very long time. Um, and you can do it in a way that uh, it doesn't hurt the tree um, and, it, and it can share its gift with you. So. And so there's typically a window um, in the summer, kind of about middle June to the middle of July, um, where the trees actually give their bark up. Uh, and you don't want to cut in too deep. You don't want to cut into this cambium um, this cork cambium part of the tree because uh, that's what it uses to transport its water and nutrients. So if you, if you cut too deep in there, you'll disrupt that flow and you're, you're essentially girdling that tree and so it'll die. But if, you, if you're gentle with it and, and how you go in to get that bark, if you just go into this, these, um, these layers up here, uh, when the tree's ready, it will give you that bark freely. Small little incision. go too much and what you want is if you can work that up and get to that uh, that corky cambium layer you can just feel the, the bark of the inside and if it's nice and wet then you know it's ready and if it's it's kind of dry to the touch then then just leave it and then if you just do these little these little test spots like that um, it's not going to make a big difference and then when you do start then that's you can actually incorporate that into what you're, if you're doing the strips, you can incorporate that into it. I do the sheath, so I'll just, I'll cut on this line when it is ready and then that's all that's, you know, you're not, you're not losing a lot of bark that way. When you start cutting into this bark and it's ready to give, um, it'll essentially pop off of the trunk. See how it's popping a little bit? Mm-hmm. So it's really important to be very gentle when you're doing this or to at least have someone show you how to do it properly before you try to do it yourself. And when you're, when you're actually harvesting the bark, you only want to take what you're going to be using. So if you have a project in mind or something, you only take what you need. Sometimes that inner layer likes to stick. They might have to drag, drag it through a little bit more. If you find a really nice stand of birch bark trees, uh, don't go in there and just take everything. Just one tree, maybe two trees will do it. If you do it at the right time, then you'll have you know that those trees there for for many many years. And then also make sure that if you're going to be harvesting uh, bark from these trees, always always take a look at the tree as well. Um, you want to make sure that you're harvesting from a healthy tree, because this when you take this bark, you're you're stressing the tree. When you look at the, the tree itself and you look up top and you see some of the crown dying back and stuff like that, or you may see some other uh, deformities on the bark, that tree is, is likely already stressed. And by taking the bark, you're, you're adding another um, stressor to it. And so um, making sure that those trees are healthy enough to share with you is really important as well.
It's also important to remember not to harvest birch bark from private property without the landowner's permission. Public land agencies require permits for harvesting any type of bark or trees. And we find a good site and healthy trees that are capable of sharing with us. Um, we always uh, give something back um, and we always introduce ourselves as well. So we let them know who we are, where we come from, and why we're there. You know, if you're going to be making baskets or you're going to be using it for ceremony, um, that's what you'll let the trees know when you, when you come here. It allows us to sort of uh, pause for a little while and remember why we're there and remember that we're taking something from another living being. Let the trees know that we have a, a good group of people that are out here. Uh, trying to reclaim their identity and their culture um, and I ask them to continue sharing their gift with us so that we can continue to live uh, what we call Minobamadzi Win or the good life. During the treaty, treaty period of 1842 and 1854 uh, the Anishinaabe people of uh, the western UP, northern Wisconsin and uh, over in eastern Minnesota as well, we had ceded millions of acres of land to the United States government and in doing that, we also retained our rights to utilize um, the land itself. And, and birch bark is a big part of that. It's a big part of our culture and it's a big part of our identity. The birch tree is, uh, is a teacher. When we do have people out here interacting with these, these trees again, uh, they're able to hear some of those stories or they're able to get some of those teachings that the, that the birch has to offer. Um, and I think that's really important um, for people in general to, uh, to get back to nature. So. My name is Minna Hokka and I live in Koskitel in Finland, Southwest Finland, teaching workshops in folk school and my desire and task is to teach people how to build traditional wind instruments that has been have been used in Finland and Karelia from the late stone age to 1950. The oldest of them is birch bark trumpet which has been used at least thousand years. Which was originally built in Burgos to frighten the wolves and bears and other wild animals from cattle and for signaling people different messages. They had agreed beforehand what means a certain rhythm of notes. kind of connects us to nature and earlier generations. And also it's very good to have instruments that are not standardized. After the workshop in the Heritage Center, where I built this beautiful trumpet, Minna and I headed back to the woods to create another one from start to finish. Take one strip that goes around, pull downwards and with loose eye, I try to get it as wide as possible. If I want it, want wider than this, then I can make with knife a spiral that goes all the way down. Minna said the ideal width of the strip is at least two inches and at least 20 feet long for a small trumpet. Now we can test what kind of horn it would be. Minna trimmed the starting end a little narrower and scraped off any bumps or rough spots that would cause the layers not to fit tightly against each other. Next she started by wrapping the bark around a small stick. A couple of times around, layers are covering each other get it a little bit more convenient to blow. 
then we start to add length. Half about goes to on previous layer. Tightly against each other, no air should escape between layers. Little bit oh, taken away from here. Only that part that going under the next layer. Then you could start making carve carvy. In 2007 or 8, I was asked to have give workshops and concerts with these instruments, and that has also kept me going on this path because people want to learn these instruments. And I don't want to be the last one who makes these. And it's very much fun to play together these instruments. To close the end layers together, Minna sharpened the ends of a stick and poked it through the end of the trumpet. She showed us other methods of fastening the end with handmade clothespins or small sticks boiled to soften them and thread it through the bark. It doesn't really give too good sound yet. Glue would help and maybe it gets open too fast. Those models that are made of a little bit thinner birch bark have a little better qualities. I could play the other one. Alright, now how do I do this? Um, at first, yes, keep your lips together and make this kind of sound. <laughs> yes, Not lips like are vibrating against each other. <laughs> And you can have more air pressure and less air pressure to get high tones. You need more air pressure and pretty kind of angry looks. I would say. Give some. The new I want to people feel they are musical too, even though somebody might have told different things, and if they have just they haven't found the right instrument before. <laughs> it's so wild. <laughs> it takes time to tame it.